Hi guys, it's Łukasz Mazurek. Today I will give you a short review of an app recently released by UA Parade called Blocks. And Blocks allows you to quickly create some basic responsive layouts based on Bootstrap 3 without any coding skills needed. So we'll start off with some basic building blocks which you can arrange however you like on the site. Then you can customize them, customize the fonts, colors, backgrounds, all that stuff. You can put your own copy and then you can export everything into Bootstrap 3 based HTML. Let me show you the app itself. I'm using a trial version here and <laughs> since the trial was quite short, uh, I didn't have the time to polish the review, so sorry for that, guys. Uh, hopefully, other reviews will be a bit better. Okay, let's start the app. It shows a nice animation and a welcome screen where we can either choose a new project or open an existing one. Let's start a new one. The workspace looks quite unusual when compared to other web design apps or even graphic design apps. You have three areas, an navbar, the body section and the footer section and you can start adding blocks to any of these areas. On the right hand side you've got an inspector. And here you have a button for adding new sub pages. Now let's create a simple design. But before we go into that, I wanted to share my opinion with you that this app really needs uh, some basic tooltips, like uh, when I hover over UI elements. Uh, and because of that, it was quite hard for me uh, at the start to just um, figure out what what does what. So yeah, <laughs> just wanted to share that with you and hopefully that can be easily added in the future. Let's start building something simple. Uh, I've opened the inspector and let's set up... You can even set up some sale specific uh, stuff like meta tags and even Google Analytics snippet. So it's quite nice to have that. Okay, blocks test drive and we'll keep it simple for now. Page width. We'll try to work with that. And I just want to start adding blocks or blocks. So let's create a simple one. It's nice that you can choose between blocks. Okay, now I need to... Okay, so now I can't... <laughs> I can't edit it. So it still has some small bugs. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, all right, I know. So now I can, if I want to switch between um, between those blocks, like I can switch now, but once I confirm it, I still am able to switch it, but uh, I need to use that one, that pop-up here. Okay. Blocks test. And a nice feature is that that menu on the right hand side is actually uh, automatic. So if I click here and add a new page, or even a couple pages. you can see that they, they are appearing in the main navbar. 
and but it has some strange design decisions. You would expect that closing that tab would actually just close it. Not, not exactly. It actually deletes it. Luckily, you, you are uh, warned about that, so probably won't happen by accident. Okay, let's add some more stuff. And as you've noticed, when you go into the container block, the main block for the body, you've got some different options here. So the app recognizes which container are you using. And you can either choose to add empty containers or you can add some more advanced stuff. Like these are pre-made for the content, but you can also add other stuff. Let's add this one. Let's add another block. Maybe let's show some people. Okay. And let's add a footer, just a plain one. <laughs> okay, um, I still have to get used to it. It's quite easy to replace images. Let me show you on that one. We've got some nice sample images that we can use. But we can bring our own images as well. Let me, we need to just click on the project assets, click add and Choose an image that you like. So let's try to save that one. And export it. And let's take a peek on the HTML. Okay, so it looks fairly nice. I mean, there's a lot of bootstrap code. Maybe some things could be optimized a bit, but you know, when making that kind of apps, you need to make some decisions that probably will result in additional code, but on the other hand, it will give you more flexibility. Let's check CSS. It's also quite nice. And it probably could serve as a starting point for other stuff. Okay, now I will sh show you just quickly how to fine tune some stuff. And one feature that I really like about it, about blocks, it's smart swatches, as far as I remember. So whenever you pick a color, add it somewhere, and maybe, I'm not sure if we can use that one here. Let's check, yeah. So, wherever, whenever I will, whenever I want to change that color to something else, I can easily do so. And notice that both things change. If I would like to perhaps pick another swatch for that, uh, so, uh, to different colors, I just need to create a different swatch. So I would have to create a swatch for that. And now I can change those independently. It's a bit like less variables. Once you are used to it, it can be quite useful.
Okay, I will show you one more thing so you can add empty blocks as well. It doesn't tell you that you've got a secret weapon uh, when you right click. So when I right click, a different menu pops up and it allows you to really quickly insert some stuff. Like I would want two images here with some text and perhaps, perhaps a text with a button. Bam. I can choose from different bricks. Maybe let's add a let's add a video. Oh, where did it go? So I right click again and it disappears. Okay, can I move it? Let's test it. Well, okay, probably some glitches. Okay, but anyway, it's quite interesting and an interesting approach and an interesting app. As you can see, you cannot do everything with it. You don't have the ability but, or at least I cannot see it to insert custom HTML. Probably it will be introduced in the future, we'll see. But uh, I, I can see some uses for it. As you can see, Blocks is less versatile than, for example, Maca, because you are only limited to building pages out of a selection of pre-made blocks. But it's actually quite similar to another product from uh, UI Parade, and let me show you that. It's called WebZap. The main difference is that WebZap generates static design in Photoshop, whereas blocks can create responsive designs and output them in Bootstrap, Bootstrap 3 based HTML. Okay, so what are the pros of blocks? Well, first of all, blocks offers a handful useful uh, pre designed blocks <laughs> to choose from. On top of that, you can also customize block contents uh, to a certain degree and also it features nice clean design. I think you can really quickly spit out simple websites based on those pre-designed blocks without any coding knowledge. So if you're not a coder, it can serve you quite well producing decent code and if you don't if you don't do any complicated websites, it can be really useful. As far as I've read on the website, it also features uh, Retina support. You can uh, choose from Google fonts. So you have access to some web fonts from Google. And as you can see, it updates really nicely. Another nice feature is that it's not a subscription-based software. So you buy it once and you can produce as many websites as you like without any limitation. Okay, and now for the cons. First of all, like I've mentioned, it has some UI or user experience problems, in my opinion, but nothing that could not be changed fairly easily. It lacks hover labels on UI items, so like for the current moment, I'm not sure what I'm doing, what I will add here, or what will this button do, or what, what is that rectangle doing. Well, you can quite easily check that out for yourself, but probably first steps with the app will be a bit hard. Also, it lacks selection indicators on hover, so only if I select something, I can change it. Only if I select something, I can see the selection rectangle. You would think it's sufficient, but uh, sometimes when you've changed the background, for example, to a black one, and you've got a black font, it's really hard to choose that font. You've got no indication where to click, you just need to 
click everywhere and hope for the best. Another con is that it hides uh, some functionality like that right click. I, I really just discovered that by accident. It's also unclear how to do some stuff like where I need to pick the hover color for that button or you know similar stuff hover mainly hovers like is that color for the link or for the hover well it seems it's for the link and it is but in some cases like for example here i think i i've done that no Let's try with that one. I know that I had a situation when I when I was only able to pick the hover color. So it's really a puzzle at the moment. And another con is that you don't have the ability, or at least I couldn't find it, to add custom HTML. However, you can get around that by uh, adding stuff or modifying uh, the code after exporting. So, who is it for? Uh, I think it's quite a good app for people who do a lot of out-of-the-box out of landing pages or simple websites. Uh, it's also good for people who either don't want to trouble themselves with design aspects or just need a fairly good starting point on, point on which they can expand after exporting the project. So, in summary, it's a nice app that gives you simple solutions for some common design problems. Like if you are not sure how to present your product, you can get some out-of-the-box solutions right within the app. Of course, that is if you accept the fact that it does not allow for custom design. You can tweak, tweak uh, the design a bit, but it's not entirely custom. Okay guys. Okay guys, thanks for watching and have a nice day.